Hi everyone, welcome to Raw Online Teaching Program. So today the topic of discussion is a very important topic that is renal tubular acidosis a general approach. Nowadays uh, in uh, super specialty examinations in theory and as well as in entrance examinations you would find uh, more questions either directly or indirectly related to the renal tubular acidosis uh, chapters. So, so today's uh, uh, discussion is going to be on a general approach to the renal tubular acidosis. So, what is uh, renal tubular acidosis? So, first of all, you should define renal tubular acidosis is actually a group of renal tubular disorders. So, renal tubular acidosis or RTA is actually a group of uh, group of disorders, group of renal tubular disorders. which is mainly characterized by normal anion gap metabolic acidosis. So, this is very important. Normal anion gap metabolic acidosis. In other ways, hyperchloremic metabolic acidosis with relatively preserved glomerular filtration function. So, this is again very important. Okay. So, the glomerular filtration function should be intact and the child should be having normal anion gap metabolic acidosis. So, these two factors is very important to define a, a group of renal tubular disorders to be renal tubular acidosis. So, this is it by definition. So, before moving on to the renal tubular acidosis, first you have to uh, know about the normal urinary acidification because kidneys play a very important role in maintaining the acid base balance of our body and this is done by, this is done by two mechanisms that is bicarbonate reabsorption and hydrogen ion that is acid excretion or secretion. So, these two important events that has to take place. The filtered bicarbonate should be reabsorbed back into the bloodstream and the form, formed acids that is H plus should be secreted or excreted in the urine. So, these two things should occur to maintain the normal acid base balance. So, this is maintained by the normal urinary acidification process. So, if you see almost 90 percent of the filtered bicarbonate, it has been reabsorbed in the proximal tubules and uh, remaining 10 percent is in the distal segments that is in the ascending lump of Henle and the middle cortical channels, the proximal tubules has been absorbed. Okay. So, moving on to the normal pathology. So, this is the proximal tubule and the collecting tubule where the maximum amount of reabsorption and the hydrogen ion secretion occurs. So, if you see in the proximal tubule first, the bicarbonate which is filtered combines with the hydrogen ions which is secreted by the NaH that is sodium hydrogen ion exchanger. So, this is one exchanger that is it uh, reabsorbs sodium and secretes the H plus. So, this H plus comes from the water. So, water splits up and the hydrogen ion from the water, it is secreted by the sodium hydrogen and ion exchanger. So, this filtered bicarbonate in the urine combines with the hydrogen ion forms the carbonic acid. So, the carbonic acid in the presence of carbonic anhydrase pore, it splits up again into water and carbon dioxide. And this carbon dioxide, what happens? It moves up diffuses freely inside the cell where uh, the, it combines with the hydroxyl ion from the water under the carbonic anhydrase type 2 it forms the bicarbonate. So, this bicarbonate is again get back into the interstitium or the bloodstream by the sodium bicarbonate co-transporter. So, this is the pathway in the proximal tubule that occurs. So, here important points are carbonic anhydrase. So, this uh, the type of carbonic anhydrase which is present inside the tubule is carbonic anhydrase 2 
and which is present in the lumen is carbonic anhydrase 4. So, this is again a potential MCQ point. So, again in proximal tubule what are the main two transporters which are present which is needed is sodium hydrogen exchanger and sodium bicarbonate co-transporter. So, these two channels are mainly involved in the proximal tubular cell. At the same time when you come to the collecting tubule cell, in the collecting tubule cell mainly the H plus ions that is H plus ions is secreted by the H plus ATPs that is the H plus ATPs channel through which the hydrogen ion is secreted. So, as I already said almost 90 percent of the filtered bicarbonate is getting reabsorbed in the proximal tubule itself. So, remaining 10 percent will come into the distal segments. So, that remaining 10 percent of bicarbonate ions combined with the secreted H plus again in the lumen in the presence of carbonic anhydrase 4 it splits up again into water and carbon dioxide. This carbon dioxide again diffuses freely back into the cell where uh, in combining with the uh, hydroxyl ion in the presence of carbonic anhydrase 2 which is present in the uh, inside the cell forms the bicarbonate ion. Here again another transporter which is important is the chloride bicarbonate anion exchanger ok. Chloride bicarbonate anion exchanger. So, this through this exchanger the bicarbonate is again reabsorbed back into the bloodstream. So, this is mainly involved in the normal urinary acidification process. When there is a defect in any of these channels, so what happens? Renal tubular acidosis sets in. So, as I already explained, renal tubular acidosis, there are broadly four types of acidosis. So, first one is the proximal RTA, which is also called as type 2 RTA, ok. So, the proximal RTA or the type 2 RTA, where there is a decreased bicarbonate reabsorption. So, as I already said 90 percent filtered bicarbonate should be reabsorbed in the proximal tubule itself. So, when there is a problem in these channels what happens there is decreased bicarbonate reabsorption. So, in that case proximal RTA occurs that is proximal renal tubular acidosis or type 2 RTA occurs. 